pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 and extended again by chapter two of the acts of 2023 this meeting will be conducted via remote means members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing steve mccarthy at mccarthy s at amherstday.gov that's m-c-c-a-r-t-h-y-s at amherstma.gov no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the Amherst website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that done, I'll call the meeting to order at 5.03 p.m. Oh, great. Um, Hallie? Here. Gaston? Here. And I'm here, so we have a subcommittee uh, with quorum, easily done. Um, welcome everybody to the, I guess this is the second meeting of the Adult Use Retail Marijuana License Subcommittee meeting. And uh, Steve sent around um, the community impact payment summary after his conversation. So I don't know, we don't really have an agenda for this meeting. Um, did everyone, uh, Gaston, thanks again for that summary of all of the host community agreements. That was really helpful. So I don't know if we want Steve to review the kind of the background of the host community agreements and why, if you've noticed, they've been dropping precipitously and are not expected to get very much. Um, so if you could just go over that quickly or as much as you need to, Steve. Really. Yeah, so I um, had a conversation with the finance director um, and forgive me if my voice is a little stuffy and sick today, but um, so just kind of going through the uh, host community agreement funds and kind of the history of that. And so um, the changes kind of kicked in in FY23. Mm -hmm. I believe it was passed a little bit after the fiscal year started, but it was kind of anticipated. Um, and so um, you can see the history there. Um, you know, FY19, I think, is when it began. FY20. I believe it was pretty much just rise and then it picked up a little bit, but then um, FY23 really dropped. And I think that's not just because of the changes in um, in the way the HCA is going to be administered, but also I think there's been a drop in um, in the business, the dispensaries. There's a lot more competition. I mean, at first, Amherst was kind of one of the only ones around with rise and now rise is closed. There's a lot more competition out there. They're really getting into a lot of different towns. So um, I believe the, all that was collected in 23 was just back payments and um, pretty much no uh, little to no payments are expected for 23. Northampton's waived the HCA fees completely for FY 23. Oh, wow. Um, what we spent the HCA on funds on so far, um, the first appropriate appropriation order was recently the schools wanted to update their health curriculum, install vape detectors in the bathrooms. That was 10 to 15,000 as part of one staff member salary for administering them. And so we have like something like 700,000 sitting in the account and local tax revenue is kind of a different point of comparison. Um, I believe the town council's committed all of that to reparations, but there is um, 208,000 in FY21, 134 in FY22 and low hundreds anticipated for 23. So you can kind of see how the business has declined there. Okay. So, um, well, that's quite a change. Um, and um, so Northampton waived theirs, huh? For FY. Yeah, that's what I believe. Yep. So their business must be down, also. Yeah. Well, they they waive the HCA fees. So um, okay. again, that's kind of there. There has been that change where it's um, you know, there's different things you have to. Right. It has to kind if of. I can in, very... interject. Uh, uh, yes. Dylan just called, and he 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 doesn't seem to have a, a link, and wonders if. Uh, I mean, I could share mine, but I don't know if that would work. Would that work? So I didn't send um, send him or Doug panelist invites because they're not really panelists. But um, oh, he see. can use the he can use the um, the link on the town's calendar. It should okay, be okay. There. Uh, let me let me get look. Uh, and we can certainly uh, allow him to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At, uh, um, so that's uh, Amherst License Commission uh, website. So if you just go to the uh, front page of the town website. Just the oh. home page, and you scroll down. There's a calendar with all the links to different um, public meetings. Yep. Okay, let's see. All right, thank you. Um, I will do that right now. Okay. 
Okay. So we just wait for Dylan to come on or we can just keep going. Anyway, uh, thank you. All right, I texted that to him, so he should be on in a, in a minute. All right, super. Great. Thanks, Gaston. Oh, Hallie, did you have something? Um, I'll wait to Dylan. Yeah, I mean, why, why don't we, uh, Dylan, Dylan can catch up with the document when, when okay. he's, but maybe Steve, you can jump to, I'm, I'm interested in the, in the kind of finale of your, what you, what's the kind of policy assessment that you, that, that surrounds this, uh, uh, drop in, in funds. And also I'm curious about the ideas about spending all that money. Uh, when, you know, it's, I, I know the town um, budget is tight all over the place. It's uh, striking to see a pot of money like that sitting. Yeah. I mean, that is all earmarked. So um, it does have to be related to the impact of, uh, of marijuana. And I believe there's been some towns out there that maybe you could it say, does. you know, they can use it to fix yeah. roads outside of, um, you know, the area dispensaries, if there's higher use from them, but I think it's, uh, it's challenging to find, um, you know, because they really were sp supposed to offset the cost of the dispensaries. It's hard to find, um, you know, really uh, explicit costs that can be related to that. Well, yeah, I mean, but uh, that's where, I mean, I think Dylan's kind of started that conversation about trying to think more broadly about about expenses or creatively. I, I would be interested in getting the feedback from like a public health uh, expert. You know, what if, if you could invest... Um, you know, money in relation to drug education or uh, assessing, dr addressing drug issues in any way, what would you want to spend money on? Because um, in relation to the usual budget, this kind of money would never exist. So people aren't, aren't necessarily thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I just wanted to ask, just, just I know I'm just a couple minutes late. I just finished up in an appointment. Um, just we're just talking about the the benefits of the the tax revenue that it uh, marijuana brings in. Um, so uh, we're at right. Uh, the funds from the host community agreements. Okay. Yeah. yeah that are so finishing. So it was hovering around a little over two hundred for the last couple of fiscal years, twenty one and twenty two. But uh, for FY twenty three, which um just finished actually we're in fy24 now because it goes until july 1st but um it was only about fifty thousand. that was really only back payments from previous years uh, because the changes kind of kicked in for for fy23 and um you know the, the hda has to it can only be collected for things you know very directly related to impacts with those changes so um so we'll can you just can we just review really quickly for a second because i i have, you want me to pull um, that back up no, no, yeah, that would be great. And also the host community agreement. So those are signed, obviously, when they first open business, correct? And they come in. And then mm -hmm. are they they're renewed every year? Is that that's correct? That's what this, this payment is for? I believe they go for a little longer than a year. I could okay. be wrong with that. They might be two. They could be one, but um But they make a payment every time it's renewed. Well, right? it has a bunch of different provisions in it, but yeah, there is payments kind of as part of that HCA, but there was a change to the law last okay. year that really restricts the um, amount of money that can, local uh, municipalities can take in from HCAs and okay. have to be, you know going directly to enumerated things related to marijuana whereas before it would kind of just go into a pot and we just okay. kind of have a pot in that pot left so uh, that 700,000 is from the past HCAs yeah we really there spent that we've... very little okay. of it and so that that isn't that's that money that isn't sub isn't subject to the current law revision the current law right that's just yeah that's that's just that's in our that's in our um bank account but okay. um, it's in a particular fund but okay. um, it's kind of restricted to be spent on that so we couldn't just put it into the general fund i don't believe okay um but i mean i think our idea is um i didn't there's been support from the town administration with this is that ideally we could just completely replace the host community agreements because um with the licensing okay. um because there's certainly not um much of a point of revenue anymore and right. um, I think licensing can cover a lot of the other provisions that they have in them um, right. and be more flexible with you know regarding to operations and things like that. I did notice in the Worcester license that they have both the license and the host community agreement 
I can't remember where it is, but is that something that they would, they're just, that I, I don't remember who found that, who, that they're just keeping or until it goes away or? Yeah, and I don't know if there's, um, yeah. I've, I have heard, Which I actually state... spoke, I spoke to a CCC lawyer actually, who I just um, met uh -huh. socially actually a, a couple weeks ago. Uh -huh. And he said that they anticipate um, a lot more changes coming down the pike with HCAs later this year. Okay. So I think this would really just be um, not necessarily something, I mean, I don't think a lot of municipalities have done licensing at all, really. We'd be one of the first ones, Worcester maybe being the first, right. but um, we would um, be looking to, um, you know, I think it makes sense um, to just kind of completely replace the HCAs just out of simplicity okay. um, and uh, just kind of avoid that overhead and um, and allow for the benefits that licensing can have with, you know, suspensions and disciplinary action and the annual review and things like that um, okay. on a more public basis than the HCAs. Okay. All right. No, I agree. But um, no, this is good to good to know. Thank you very much. Um, okay. So oh, guest on, oh, sorry, go ahead, guest. No, no, I mean, so, I mean, what I'm hearing, uh, Steve, is that for, for the first time we have kind of a, a crystal clear mandate to, to move forward and, and do yeah. our best to create a license that, that carries whatever load the HCA was carrying. I think there's, there's support for that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Would they be on the same cycle as us? So just so we have like a working kind of deadline, would we want to have this done and drafted by like the end of October so that it could go out to the dispensaries so that they can license in time for January 1st? I think that would be great. I mean, I believe the HCA, the, the last round of HCAs was written to expire um, in next March, I believe. Okay. Okay. Um, so that would be nice. I All mean, right. just to, so we're not doing something mid-year for, yeah. just we have a kind of a t working timeline. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I, I think that, um, uh, I think that we could use our time very well to simply create a timeline for our process. Great. Okay. I, I so, mean, I think that that's that would be a big accomplishment for today if we can try to identify what we need to do so that we have a better sense when we have these meetings of what our homework is and what our deadlines are. Okay, I agree. Um, so we want to be done by October, general agreement, like first of the month or end of the month. Doesn't Let's matter. have the goal first of the month. First well, of the month. I, 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 I can. Can we? Can we first? Uh, uh, maybe like make. I say everything that needs to happen um, because we also need to have a realistic time frame. I, I think that we should bring in, try to invite the current, you know, license holders, the dispensaries, I mean, not license holders, the, right. the, the permitted dispensaries to come in and, and tell us what are the issues, which I think we should invite. I don't know if we'll, they'll come, but we should invite the community to tell us any, any concerns or issues that they can see. Um, okay. Because yeah. we we are in a position to be somewhat, you know, imaginative. Not that we want to uh, create all kinds of crazy things, but we might as well be thoughtful about it and and figure out what what we want this license to do. Okay, I think that's a good idea. So, should we start with the license holders? So, we want to see the license holders. We want a community community session i mean did, but do, what do uh, do do you all ag agree with that what do you, does that seem um like a good idea to get try to get some feedback from yeah I, and community people i mean is it better to get feedback from the dispensaries when we have a draft so that they can kind of conceptualize what we're trying to do or is it better to just talk to them ahead of time I would do, I'd lean towards a, a, a just a very, a draft first, but, um, which I think we can probably put together fairly quickly. I mean, between what, what Doug has. What, what Doug has, what Worcester has. Right. I think we could at least start with something like that. Okay. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's gonna, um, um, yeah. I mean, I, if, if I said, I'm going to try to take a, make a first draft here. I mean, that's, um, you know, that's probably about five hours of work probably to try to get something decent together. I mean, it's, uh -huh. um, it's going to take some, it's going to take some effort. 
um, to pull to pull things together and and create a document that in that we could um, that's moving in the right direction. I, I think. Okay, so um, so would you prefer Gaston to just have the license holders? I mean the dispensary owners in first. I mean, I think we could probably. Uh, I mean, Steve, um, is there, do you have a sense of any desires from, from the town manager's office or from um, the license, you know, inspection services office or anyone else about what, what if anything, they want the license to do? Um, I'm not in specifics. I mean, in broad terms, I think, you know, they'd want just, you know, right, regular, you know, kind of just along the lines of liquor licensing, you know, regular checkups, provisions for discipline when necessary, um, you know, just, just for a, a functioning licensing system. Yep. And the town council has to enact the legislation also, isn't that correct? We're not. I believe they would, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're not technically allowed to license for it quite yet. So, um So we need to talk to somebody there. I mean, what, when it comes to alcohol, we're not the ones who, I mean, what's the equivalent with alcohol of the kind of license that we're envisioning substituting the, the host community agreement? Oh, I mean, the Worcester one looked like it was similar to the off-premises. Yeah. They're, out, they're all, all alcohol off-premises license. So we'd probably take that. And um, uh, you know, we we talked yes last time about uh, talking with Dylan about working on a in case there's a an, a, a consumption cap on premises consumption coming down the road. So, but that's something we'd like to put in. But I think we could start just taking a look at our um, off premises license um, with the Worcester could, license. Could you, could you put the off premises license on the on the screen, Steve? Uh, what do you mean? Well, I mean, when you say the the off premises license, Marion, what are you referring to? The all the the one that the uh, the liquor stores have, isn't that what yeah, that is? But but what yeah. what is that? What what information does that license have? The application. Oh, didn't we write? It would be um, the guidelines. Yeah, right? the guidelines. That's what. It, yeah, that we just wrote up recently i mean would that be i mean that might not yes. it's not doesn't cover anything but it would be a starting point i think i guess what i'm trying to observe is how what is what is similar and what is different about the alcohol license when it comes to the alcohol license we're very um uh prescribed in what we can do by the um the abcc right right I think the idea would just be along the lines of alcohol licensing. I mean, I think right. that we could certainly make some improvements. I mean, if we were making the alcohol license system from scratch, there might be a lot we would change. We wouldn't have the ABCC to deal with. Obviously, they have to go completely independently through the CCC. Certainly wouldn't be, wouldn't want to do a quota system. So I think there's been some horrible externalities with that. Um, but, um, you know, I mean, along those lines, just in terms of the uh, extent of review and disciplinary procedures and things like that. Okay, and I, I guess I'm just uh, I'm I'm being a little bit obtuse in my head here because I'm trying to like a lawyer think what's our precedent document, and are we saying that our precedent document for the off premises license is the bylaws that that we drafted? Is that what we're? I mean, because we've had the licenses long before we had. Oh, the I see what you're saying. Bylaws. So is there is there something that's tantamount to? What's the what are the documents that are like what we're think, seeking to draft? I mean, in, I think it's the alcohol. a combination of our license regulations and the Worcester regulations, our alcohol regulations. And we do have a, the draft that Doug had prepared too, but I think this really will be a, a completely de novo document with the Worcester one probably being the closest precedent, but we are kind of doing a de novo um, style of uh, yeah. you know, style thing here. So we do have Doug's draft to, to work off of our own alcohol guidelines and uh, the Worcester one, but it, it is kind of a, a wholly new thing. Right. But, but it, if, um, let's just humor me because I'm, I, I feel like I'm having a, a senior moment or something. If um, the Spirit House said, 
Uh, Steve, can you just send me the document that describes all of the obligations that I have as a licensee of, of off-premises liquor sales? What would you send him? Uh, probably Mass General Law Chapter 31, 38, sorry, 138, yeah. sorry, yeah. 138. Yeah. Okay, all right. Oh. And we don't, we don't have anything, we don't, there's nothing like that in state law that governs what we're uh, doing here then. No, I don't believe so. Okay, so. Well, that's interesting. So does that mean we wait for the law to change? No, I mean, I think as we see by Worcester, and I believe we've had tentative, uh, tentative conversations with attorneys that we do have the authority to do it. Right. But um, it will be really a, a kind of de novo um, yeah. style of, or, or path of regulation where um, it's really just passed by local bylaw and then by local... Um, local regulations i'm trying to think of um you know other license types we have that are that are local i mean the keg regulations even might be something to look at because that's not something that has any precedent with the state well i i think our private the private the club regulations right right yeah that builds off of um chapter 138 as well but it um it is kind of no new you know completely local regulations but yeah, yeah, I mean, I think the, with the keg, the keg thing might be something just in terms of style, where I believe it's enabled by a, a town bylaw, and then there's, there's regulations that cover it. What What is? Do you have easy access to that keg document? That, that I keg can document? Um, try to find that. Yeah. Uh, um, let's see. Um, I mean, otherwise, I think the 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 kind of document we created for the for the club regulations. I think might be our best model of what it would look like. Um, but I mean, I'm curious what the keg, what the keg document says. Okay, short-term keg permit. I think that's in the general bylaw, so I'm looking for that. I've got, I can see the application, but yeah, I don't know what the, oh no, it's, it's, it's attached. Um, uh, uh, yeah, Steve, if you just search, I mean, it's in the short term uh, keg permit page, the permit application has the bylaw after the application on page two. I am tempted to make a parallel construction joke, but I did just find that in the uh, general bylaw, so I'll put that up. Okay, okay, F fair enough. Um, I'm, uh, I got. Um, I think we have, uh, we've got, I think we have some inconsistencies. <laughs> wow. Oh, really? This, this might be the version that was, uh, changed to reflect the, um, the license commission. The other one might be older. What's the date? Yeah. Yeah. So, right. The, oh, so April. we need to update the application, Steve. The application has the 1991 by the, ah. okay. Uh, good. Yeah, okay. I mean, so it's this, what we're drafting is a town bylaw, a section of it, like the keg. Um, so I guess that's the question. Are we drafting for the bylaw or are we drafting our own uh, license terms like the private club? I think it would make sense to do both. I mean, ultimately it'd be the town council that adopted the bylaw, of course, but it would um, certainly help them out and speed things along if we gave them a draft of that to work with. And then we would also have our um, our own rules and regulations that could be more flexibly changed. Okay, all right. So, the, so then we wanna create two documents. We'll, we should start with the bylaw, but then we wanna decide what it is in the bylaw that should have some play in the joints for the commission to administer. Okay. Yeah, I think that perfect makes perfect sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, mm -hmm. right. Okay. Um, so if we're drafting bylaw, I think we should find you know, who's our current. Uh, is Mandy Joe our our town council liaison? I think so. Uh, she's the one. I assume so. Right. She hasn't. Was she ever officially assigned to us, or did she just? 
I, I don't know if Turn she was off. just reaching she out. She's kind of, yeah. yeah. Well, why don't I, do you want me to email her and then see, let her know? What I, I think, I think it would be good to yeah. kind of start paving the way so that, um, because the reality is that all the work that we did on that, um, that uh, Hallie and I did got basically lost in the process of it becoming a bylaw, right? They, mm -hmm. they started from scratch. So we, we don't want to, we don't want to oh. do that all over again. Okay. All right. So let me, um, I'll email her, um, invite her to a meeting. Well, I mean, just who's the, who's the liaison for, right. who's the, the town council liaison? Um, the for us, I, I don't know if we had it. I don't remember after Alyssa left, I don't remember ever having an official one. She's the one yeah. who kind of just stepped in and said, here's the, we're doing rental regulation. Well, so who wants but, to be the town council liaison for, okay. uh, for, a, uh, for a potential cannabis license? Right. This might be another one to look at. This is um, for the dealing and used articles bylaw. This one's pretty simple, but this is another license that's enabled in the general bylaw. Uh, Steve, I'm just seeing the, the penalty section here. Um, there really is only A and B. Can you see oh, A? Wow. And B? Okay, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, we may be time to time make rules and regulations regarding the issuing of licenses. Yeah, well, that, that's not going to fly here. All right. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we'll just decide when we want to do it. <laughs> um, okay. Looks easy enough. Okay. okay. So uh, email now, to Mandy Johanneke. Start yeah, with that. I want to now, I'm, I'm trying to, I want to go back and see what, I mean, look at Doug's document with these eyes because I, I never really knew how to how to assess what um, Doug was working on. You mean through the the idea of drafting some language for a bylaw? We did it. We do have a draft of it. Oh, we do, do have a draft. Well, did, was his draft intended? Is that as what a that is? Bylaw. Um, no, I believe it was intended as regulations. I don't think we have any draft of a bylaw. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, so we we don't we don't have a draft of it. We do have a draft of the. So we have a draft of, of regulations, but not of bylaw language. Oh, but of bylaw language. Okay. So. But the Worcester one would be bylaw language. I'm not sure if they had provisions for rules and regulations as well, but that is that was something they adopted as a general bylaw. Okay. Okay. <laughs> is everybody reading Doug's document now? I'm I'm um, trying to. Does any uh, anyone know when what date it was last distributed to us? Uh, okay. twenty twenty two, sometime. Uh, it was see. a long time ago. Do we want to? Um, 31, 22, maybe. Let me see if that's it. Uh, I think the last draft was around August or September of last year. I am homesick, operating off my laptop. So I'm not no, no. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I honestly feel uh, bad that you even have to be uh, with us right now, Steve. It's yeah. nice to have company. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. Um, uh, it's uh, it's in the eight August thirty one uh, package, um, so I'm I'm opening it up just to, and I'll report. Um, I mean, I'm you know I'm excited that we have a mandate. It, uh, up until now, it's been kind of kind of ambiguous. Um, yeah, he drafted as as regulations. Okay. And um, and I think that. It sounds like we we if we're going to have a creative role here, we need to do the the heavy lifting on a bylaw. Mm -hmm. So does it make sense for this group to bifurcate and someone do regulations and someone do a bylaw, or did the two are the two so close in hand hand in hand that we can't? Yeah, I think it's one. It's kind of figuring out the architecture of it. What what uh, Dylan, you were going to say something. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I mean, I think we do either one. It seems like there's a benefit to keeping kind of a broader um, a broader bylaw, especially where this is all new to us. Uh, and I think there's an argument to be made that 
uh, we might want to keep some flexibility that way. If we put forward something, you know, whatever, you know, we, we put forward the equivalent of a coin operation tax, because maybe it makes sense today, you know, rather than years down the line, we're looking why only the hangar paying $3,500 a year to us. Like, I think it gives us that flexibility. Um, and two, I think we are, one, we're figuring it out. And my, maybe this is just my take. I don't want to make this harder. I think that we have to, at the end of the day, a lot of these businesses are operating and have a track record of operating. My kind of thinking in terms of the regulation side of things, what we write whatever authority we stem from the, the bylaw. I, I even think taking the almost exact same approach as we did to uh, private clubs, they're operating, they're operating well. I know when I go to uh, uh, Red Cardinal, you know, they check my ID once at the door. And then even once I walk, get buzzed through the person. So, you know, they, they've clearly got to be able to see, well, hey, how are you guys currently operating? And does that make sense to us rather than, you know, doing something in the dark where we, we end up putting, you know, cumbersome regulation in because we thought, maybe it made sense. Uh, I don't know, that's my thinking on, on how to approach this. Well, what your comment suggests is that the big kind of policy question is what should the levers available to the commission be to act independently? What, 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 should, what should the commission be empowered to be able to do of its own action? With um, with alcohol licenses, we can change the the amount of the fee. Um, we've uh, you know we've kind of worked on the edges around the the what the ABCC requires. Is that is that how you see it, Steve? Yeah, I mean the CCC does have their own regulations, so we want to um, you know maybe there's some things that we want to keep in there. Um, in case those regulations change, so although making sure to be flexible if we don't want to create contradictory requirements, but um, certainly some things that could go above and beyond or things that we want to ensure at a local level. Mm -hmm. And I think I think the primary you know be, be benefit will be local um, you know ability for local disciplinary action. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, so. I mean that then that raises a question: What are the um, what are the, the the kinds of violations that that we're concerned with potentially enforcing against? I mean, clearly underage. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They also the Worcester one had a fine for anyone who is purchasing and then distributing to somebody underage and um i think in the summary that you prepared there was also something about tracking the product uh mm -hmm. from beginning to the end um which was probably useful i don't know how we can how we put that in there though yeah so, we would want to make sure it's things that we can actually reasonably enforce right right so and i'm not, I'm not sure that's like realistic but and, you know a simple simple thing of even saying you know that the the, the seller makes reasonable uh what do you call it enforcement checks to make sure you know that the guy isn't walking in and selling it to the kid standing you know outside the door you know offering right. 50 bucks to whoever's going to go along right like um, however we want to word that but i i think that's you know a reasonable standard you can't stop somebody from driving buying and then going back and selling to the kid um on-premise consumption yeah that was absent absent uh the license. A license absent right um okay uh, right right now at this moment we're just talking about um like a, a marijuana store like a to-go liquor store right we're not right, talking yeah. about um, right yeah, Right. I think we do. We do want to set it up. I think we want to get get this off the ground. Get you know get the bio on a cover everything, 
and then get get the regulations off the ground first for the off premises, but write it in such a way it can be easily expanded for on premises. And once the off premises is adopted and running, then we can work on the on premises for whenever that comes. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'll put it out there. I, 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 we want to simultaneously work on on premises, uh, and I. Would love to take the lead on that one. Um, so I personally would like to see us in the position, you know, when the CCC does allow for it, assuming they do, that we're in a position to to be one of the first in the state. If that's something that you know the rest of the board would want, um, but I'd like to see that. I don't want to be beaten out by Northampton again. They got us in the first dispensary, yeah. But you know, we well, we've got the whole population. They're all driving. Well, for it. well, I mean, I think the bylaw could base could basically give us the that's that's our that's our like bailiwick right there i think the the mm -hmm. bylaw could give us the authority to regulate off premise uh off, you know the on-premises consumption the way that we have the authority to to to, to regulate bars mm -hmm. yeah i think that you're both exactly right we could we can write the bylaw so that it covers both of them and then maybe just get you know the first draft of regulations to cover off premises because that's what's going on now and then immediately start to work on the on premises side of it i think um, that makes sense mm -hmm. so okay back back to the timeline that gaston had suggested yeah. okay. so I, I i hearing everything that has to be done i don't know if we would get anything done by october 1st right um okay I mean, I think we should have some, I, I guess personally, I, I'm of the view that it would be great to have, um, it would be great to have some feed, stakeholder feedback. Um, and it could be as simple as starting by putting it on the agenda in a more explicit way in our regular meeting. We could, and, and encourage people to come and share ideas. I don't know if, uh, if that's- oh, So like discussion of uh, adult use marijuana license. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. If, I mean, to try uh, to try to get anyone who has something to say about it, I mean, it would be, it's good to hear everybody. I mean, if anybody has a view here, we might as well hear it. But, I, but, but in terms of like those, uh, the enforcement issues, it seems like Worcester is really trying to bridge to um, drug enforcement, and so if if we're going to think about that, then we should get feedback from from the police department. Right. Okay. So I have written down people we want to. So we want to work on draft of the bylaw language which includes a review probably of what Doug has written, mm -hmm. the uh, Worcester regulations, um, CCC regulations, um, any relevant regulations that we have for other our other licenses. We also want uh, feedback from owners of dispensaries, uh, a community session at some point, um, find out the town council representative, uh, maybe talk to the town administration in the form of the town manager or somebody like that would you agree steve and the police department did i miss anything i mean who else do we want to let's see yeah that's what i have uh for consultation. Um, so in other words, for the next time we, so we'll put, and then we'll put a, as you said, suggested guess on a more explicit agenda item, like marijuana license under discussion items next time at, at our meetings so that we can bring up to speed people who weren't at uh, the subcommittee meetings. I, I yeah, I, yeah, I, I guess, um... Maybe the or I guess the order that I I see is it would be if it would be great to get find out if there's buy-in from the town council and who's going to shepherd this. Okay. So that right. we we have a runway. Once we have a runway, then I think we can say in in a regular meeting, 
uh, we are working with the town council to draft a bylaw and mm -hmm. uh, and regulations, and we're open for for feedback. Okay, all right. So the first thing I, I'll just email Mandy and see if we'll have a contact with us. Okay, and feel them out, and that will be our next step. I mean, I could I could create like a Frankenstein document where just all the different sources are in a, a row and we can look at it and kind of say yes, no, maybe to stuff. Yeah, I sure. That, if that doesn't that take too seems, much. Yeah, that I mean, I can, that's not a big deal, but it okay. seemed like a good way to use one of our meetings. Yes, I think oh. so. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, let's do that. When is when is our next meeting going to be of this of this uh, task force? And um, I have August tenth down. Is that correct, Steve? Two weeks from today. So next week is BLC on the third, and then the tenth would be five o'clock. If that yeah, works I think we are going to be doing alternate weeks. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. Uh, I know I have some. My I have, I'm looking at my family calendar. We have like dinner guests. Um, family guests, but um, if we start at five and it's, you know, we keep it to the six or I don't know if, if, if people could start earlier that day, potentially. I could start earlier. Yeah, I could do like 4.45 uh, or 4.30 maybe. Uh, what about? I, I was even going to ask if people wanted to start at six for this guy, because I was going to, uh, I, this is, I think, an important issue that I definitely want to give a lot of focus to, so I'm going to okay. be requesting this okay. time off from work. Okay. The only okay. thing is, you know, that gets me out of my 6 p.m. slot, but it's right. still, you know, if I have 3 okay. p.m. that goes till 5, okay. which is, is pretty common, it might uh yeah, might not be the case. So uh, um okay. is there another day? Uh, so another day. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Another day. I, I, other times that work Ooh. for me, um I, I I can do Friday mornings. Uh, or Sundays, uh, ideally mornings as well. Uh, I don't know about anybody else, but everything else in my schedule is a little bit Okay. Or Tuesday mornings. I don't, I don't know if anybody else likes Tuesday mornings. Tuesday mornings, you said? Um, Tuesday, Tuesday mornings. Um, Tuesday, I mean, uh, Tuesday morning is it could potentially work for me, but I'd be looking at um, at at Tuesday the 15th. Oh. I mean, we can keep this this time slot for for at least the next meeting. Um, okay. I would say. Uh, in terms of if, if we're looking to get something but I, I I personally don't think it's impossible for us to, to have this finished by October 1st if the people outside of us uh, we can coordinate them coming in yep. as we okay. want. Uh, would we even want, Steve, would you, do, I mean, does it make sense for us to even reach out to uh, current uh, distributors now to come to our next meeting if they're available to give us some feedback? Or do we want to have a little bit more framework and do that in a month from now? I would say a month, but okay, that, that's my inclination. Just to... And what what do we what do we specifically want to have done between just now and the next meeting to set us up for being able to invite them into to meeting? Do we want to have like okay. kind of a rough draft of a of a bylaw? Well, and well, I think what what I think I what I can do it'll take me may I can I just need to schedule it, but it, I think in about ninety minutes or an hour I can create a table that has kind of all the different issues that come up in any of these documents. And uh, it can say which ones it's in, and then we can kind of look at it and at least narrow down the issues that we think should be, um, that we think should be on, on uh, at either the bylaw or the, or the regulation level. If that, okay. I mean, it, uh, I think that we could use a meeting efficiently with a document like that. Yeah, I think that would be great. Um, Thank but you. I just need, I just need to find a, a date that I can actually do and prepare for. And, um, 
if if Tuesday morning is an option, and I mean the fifteenth could 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 work, that I think is that's a, a date that I could I could do this for. Okay. I don't know if if uh, if that's feasible for even for for Dylan or who suggested Tuesday morning or anyone else. Dylan, what time Tuesday? Um, it would need to be at like probably nine a.m. Um, I could even do earlier, 8 a.m. if people like 8. Um, but 9, 9 a.m. that day, I have an 8 o'clock, so 9, 9 would be would be good. I will be, I have to get kids to camp, but I would be a few minutes late. Is this this coming Tuesday or? No, 15. it would be the, the 15th 15th. of August. That yeah. should work for me. Okay. Yeah, I think I can make 9. I mean, should we, we can do 9 15? If that, or I mean, but, if we're just, trying to maximize time, you guys start 9, 9 a.m. Yeah. So that that would be great, and then um, I'm uh, I'm just kind of I'm just blocking uh, I'm blocking uh, time before then to to try to create a, a table of issues. Okay. And if you need a second set of eyes or anything, just cool. Let me know. Okay. Good. I mean, right. it's okay. Uh, I'll I'll email you, uh, Hallie. Um, okay. Create. Canvas. So the sources that we've got is um, Doug's document, right. Worcester, right. Um, I guess CCC regulations for ideas, right. um, and then uh, our uh, our alcohol bylaw, right, has issues that are relevant. Yeah, right. Okay. I mean, our, our alcohol regulations, right. right. Okay. Right. Okay, great. And so, and I will send an email to Mandy. Um, and we'll see what comes from that. Um, anything, well, that sounds like a plan for the 15th, nine o'clock. Um, anything else on this? And we can certainly discuss this in our normal meeting as well. I mean, the intention yes. of this subcommittee was just to give us more time. But... Right. Okay, great. Well, if there's um, anything else before we adjourn, no? Is there no. a motion to motion to adjourn? So, so moved. moved. Okay. I don't know who was that. That was Gaston. Thank you, Gaston. Is there a second? I will second. Thank you, Hallie. Um, all in favor, we'll take a vote. Gaston. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Dylan. Oh wait. I don't get a vote. That's right. Sorry, you don't get a vote. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next. <laughs> Maybe next right. time. Who knows? <laughs> and I vote aye. That is three to zero. Um, and we're adjourned at 5.50. Okay, great. So see you all on the third. I hope you and feel better, Steve. Yeah, yeah, Steve, yeah. Sorry, sorry you feel better. Thank soon. you all, appreciate it. Please There's a new season coming. of what we do in the shadows on my kids. I'm super <laughs> excited. So. Well, what's that on? Is that on Hulu? Tomorrow too. Oh uh, yeah, Hulu. <laughs> I need to watch that show. I really like that actor. Never Which, seen what, what's the show? What we do in the shadows. Okay, I don't know it. I don't know. It's, it's actually funny.